What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mike Zuniga Films Podcast. In this episode, I have with me Daniel Russell. He's a director and filmmaker. In this episode, he shares his journey from attending film school in New York to taking the leap and moving to Los Angeles to pursue directing. Through his determination, he built relationships within the music video industry and has worked with talented individuals and groups from Dave Myers, Top Dog Entertainment, Two Chains, and more. So without further ado, Daniel Russell. Thank you, Daniel, for being on the podcast. I really appreciate it. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining. Um, I wanted to get you on this podcast just because I've seen your work lately and I really like what you're doing, but I'm also really curious about you know, your story, where you came from. And, you know, I'd just like you to share that for me and then all of you that are listening right now and watching. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm from Virginia. I'm from Norfolk, Virginia, uh, where Missy, Pharrell, Pusha, and Timbaland all came out of. They're my homies. Not really. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm from Virginia. Um, I went to school in New York, four years, film program, and moved to LA right afterwards, and uh, yeah, I was uh, an assistant to Dave Myers, uh, well-known music video director, which gave me a lot of insight into videos and like how they're done. Mm-hmm. And from there, I recently left in May and started doing my own thing, and uh, got a couple of videos under my belt and just trying to keep it rolling. Nice. So you're originally from Virginia. Is that right? Yeah, Norfolk. It's like close to Virginia Beach, uh-huh. um, like largest Navy base in the entire world. Um, it's a cool, it's a cool city. It's yeah. a cool city for sure. But uh, I was ready to to leave, so I went to New York. Okay, and then w- did you go to New York uh, University? Yeah, I went to NYU. Uh-huh. Um, I originally actually went as an English major. Uh, I was super into comedy at the time, and like a lot of my like heroes, like Conan. A lot of the people that wrote for The Simpsons, they were all like liberal arts majors. So I was kind of like going in that path. Like I'll, I'll do liberal arts and I'll get really good at writing and be funny and like, you know, become like a TV comedy writer. Yeah. Um, my freshman year, I was on like the TV floor. Uh-huh. And so like pretty much everyone on my floor was in Tish. And it suddenly occurred to me that if I wanted to go into TV, why was I not in Tish? So I transferred my sophomore year. Got in, thankfully, and uh, yeah, three years in the film program, and uh, I was the first class that shot digital, and wow. everyone was upset about that, but <laughs> I was cool with it because I could shoot as long as I wanted. Yeah, that's true. You yeah. don't have to worry about film and doing exactly. All that they, stuff. You know, they say it's good for you to shoot on film because it you know forces you to know all your shots, but it's also good when you can shoot for two hours instead of right two minutes. Right. You know? Yeah, it gives Get a you lot more, more time. Exactly. Yeah. For and sure. from there, I started like editing, so I learned how to edit real quickly. So it was. I was very. I was cool with the digital. I'm not Christopher Nolan over here. You know. <laughs> That's because you're, you're learning. Film. Yeah, you're, you're learning at that time, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, what were some of like the early projects that you did while you were at uh, NYU? Yeah. So, uh, first thing is at NYU they do this thing called Sight and Sound. So you make like five films and like you know couple weeks like you're just shooting constantly you have a group of people um so and those were all silent films uh so i did you know my share of silent films and uh from there the next step if you want to be a director is like the intermediate program um and so i made like you know a seven minute film uh with a couple you know a couple grand scrounged up somehow and we shot like at some airbnb in harlem Mm -hmm. and uh that was cool. And then my senior year, I was in the thesis film program and I shot a film that still hasn't come out called Good Old Boy. I shot it back in Virginia uh-huh. and uh, it's going to come out one day, but <laughs> but it hasn't come out yet. One day. One yeah, day you'll one see One day it. for sure. Yeah. One day for sure. Nice. Because I saw um, actually one of your videos, it was Pandora's Box. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was that was pretty cool. Thanks, I like that one. Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, so uh, that was one of the, you know, first year films. Um, if anyone's stalking my Vimeo, I haven't looked at it in like three years, <laughs> so who knows what's on there. But um, uh, yeah, that was that was one of the better ones I did. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's really good to learn to, you know, tell a story without audio, especially, you know, if you're doing music videos, it's sort of the same thing. Right. I mean, you have audio, obviously, but it's a similar drill. Uh-huh. But, you know, telling a story through images versus, you know, 
being able to have VO or be able, be able to, I guess that actually did have VO, so maybe I'm lying, but, but yeah, no, it was cool. It was cool. But that was one of my, that was one of the first things I ever shot. Nice. And was that just a collaborative effort in terms of idea or was that like mainly your idea that you came up with? For yeah, that? I wrote the idea. Um, and then, uh, I think the, the actor in it who ended up doing the VO, he, he helped a little bit with the VO. He helped spruce, okay. spruce up my VO a little nice, bit, but, nice. uh, yeah, it was, I wrote it and directed it and edited it. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Cause I like the concept. Cause like it was, uh, originally he was trying to get some, some extra change to get a uh, Chipotle. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah one of the <laughs> Dos Toros. If you're in New York, Dos Toros sponsor me. <laughs> and um, then it's the best burrito in New York. Is down. it really? Yeah, for sure. I've only been to New York for like a couple of days, but I just went straight to like Times Square and all that stuff. Yeah. But I haven't been, I haven't had a chance to really explore like the other parts of it. Yeah. I mean, like, New York is not the place to eat Mexican food, really. I mean, there is great Mexican food, but especially in LA, like, it's nothing. But Dos Torres is pretty good. It was one of my frequented places. So I'll keep that in mind. I I was happy to do a little product placement. There we go. Dos Torres. (laughs) And uh, and I like kind of like the, um, I don't know, at the end, it wasn't something like you were expecting because he went and he went to go steal like a Chipotle because he fell down and all the change went everywhere yeah and then he goes back and then puts his hand in the bag and it's yeah. a burger <laughs> yeah yeah well you know with short films like it's you know it's always nice to have a good ending um that one is not necessarily a great ending but it you know it's something you didn't see coming at least yeah exactly yeah um so yeah i mean i think that's something um for short films that's always like it's it's good to think about your film that way. Like it's like endings are very important in short films, and mm-hmm. they don't all have to have you know twists, especially ones that don't really make sense. But uh, it's a good way to you know give up like a reason to watch it again or something like that. Right. Yeah. And um, I know you started off as an English major going into college, mm-hmm. and then you kind of had that pool of like, well. I'm working with a lot of my friends in kind of like that film um, setting and you kind of wanted to pursue that. So you made that switch to start learning more about directing and being in that space. Um, So for like someone that maybe they're in college and they're in a different major and they kind of want to maybe switch majors or Mm -hmm. something like what, what were you thinking during that time that helped you make that decision? Yeah, well, I was arrogant, so I was like, if these kids are in Tish, I could be in Tish. Um, I'll talk about film school for a second. You yeah. know, I think it's it's certainly overrated. You certainly do not need to go to film school. Um, it If you can, then it doesn't hurt. You know, I was lucky enough to already be at NYU, so I was transferring to, you know, a very well-established program. Um, but with that said, um, you know, really it's all about getting out there and shooting if you want to be a director like just go shoot 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 and to a certain extent i feel like film school you know you had these projects and it kind of like my biggest regret is i didn't shoot more in new york like i could have shot 100 music videos in new york you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and like instead i was focusing on these little short films uh instead of just like getting out there and doing it. Um, you do meet a lot of people, which is good. I mean, I'd say 99% of the people I went to school with are still in New York. So, you know, that is what it is. Yeah. But, uh, but my advice, you know, if you want to shoot, just go, go shoot. Like, it doesn't matter whether you're a math major, like, or like you're going to the best film school in the world. Like it, all that matters is what you've shot. And the only way you get good s- stuff is by doing a lot of really bad stuff. Yeah. Um, I went home a couple Christmases ago and I just, I knew I had to shoot a video and I ended up shooting four videos for one of my buddies, conspiracy, mm-hmm. check them out. Conspiracy, the S is a dollar sign. Um, and they're not great videos, but I learned so much, right? you know what I mean? And, and I had something yeah. if the opportunity, you know, they always say that, you know, luck is opportunity meets preparation. Mm hmm. It's all about being prepared for when the opportunity strikes. And so, you know, if 
you know, fate has it where, you know, someone has something that they want you to shoot or something like that. And they ask to see your work, like you better have some work. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you're not going to shoot a good video until you shoot 20 bad ones. So get those 20 out of the way as quickly as possible. Right. Cause I mean, if you don't start, if you don't try, right, like you're never going to make that next step to where you want to go because like you would never know if that's for you, if you haven't even done anything yet. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for sure. And, um, and you know, film school really like, yeah, you get access to equipment, but like if you get a Ronin and your iPhone, like you can shoot anything you want. Oh, yeah. And like, um, you know, they make you watch a bunch of films that you might not normally watch. You can go watch those films. Like it really, the only thing I'd say that it is supposed to provide again is like a network, but like, you know, none of my classmates came to LA. They're all in New York. Really? And a lot of them went into music and others like other things. So, you know, I think, like for me, like just moving to LA, I networked so much farther just like actually being here than like meeting, you know, your friends in film school that are shooting stuff for you. Like who knows? Yeah. But um but yeah. Nice. For instance, I'll give you an example. The the first video I shot in Norfolk for this guy, uh, Conspiracy. It's called Truth Be Told. Uh -huh. And so we we shot four videos. And three of them were very much just like, you know, one set up, like, you know, handheld. And there was one that was like going to be my magnum opus. And it was truth be told. And we shot that one first. And I basically left the, like the, uh, the camera on the tripod the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going, I started cutting it up and I realized like how boring and static the whole video is. I mean, I had access to this, our local baseball field, the tides, uh -huh. And it was like our big epic, like, you know, we put a hundred dollars down for the location. It was like, you know, we were going in on this one uh -huh. and I learned right then and there, like I got to move the camera. And so some of the other videos, while like they don't have necessarily the production value, um, they're a lot better because I had just shot one where I didn't move the camera at all. And I realized I needed to move the camera. Um, and you don't learn that unless you shoot a video without moving the camera. You know, yeah. Like, like when you that. watch your stuff back, you'll you'll see. So, it's really, just like whether it's you're in film school, whether you're not in film school, whether you want to go to film school, whether you can't afford film school, if you want to be a director, get your iPhone, find a friend, or make it make a video for you know like a, a track that you like. Just like shoot, like shoot as much as you can. I like I like that because. Um you kind of learned as you were going in a way. I mean, you're still getting kind of like some experience with film school, but like actually being there in the field, being there and like seeing like, okay, maybe this didn't work. Cause you would never know unless you shot it, went back into post and then figured like, okay, I need to move the camera a lot more yeah, to make it look You know, better. you can write like a 10 page paper on Citizen Kane and like the camera movement there and still show up to set and think that, you're okay just locking off a wide shot. You know what I mean? Like you really, it's by doing that you learn. Um, so yeah, that's my biggest piece of advice. Like hands down, like I kick myself every day that I didn't shoot more in New York. Like if you live in New York, every block is beautiful. Yeah. And you can go anywhere and you can shoot anywhere and it's all looks cool because of New York. Uh -huh. And I totally like, I totally didn't just get myself out there. I was totally like one of those traditional film students that thought, you know, their film was going to be the big one and just focus on this one film. And then, you know, it's not. And it's like, well, why did you spend six months working on one little film when you could have just shot in like 30, you know? So that's my biggest piece of advice. Just shoot, shoot, yeah, shoot. I like that. I like that. Oh, let's just move this just a little bit that way. This way. Um, that way. Just in case, like, if you want to talk to the oh, camera. Yeah, for sure. just so, yeah. Cool. Um, so... You graduated in 2011 from NYU? No, I graduated uh, 2011 um, in Norfolk. Okay. Uh, I want to shout out the Governor's School for the Arts. Uh, it's a magnet arts high school I went to. They have you know dance, instrumental music. I was in the theater department, so I was an actor. But that was when I, I really first started because... I was more drawn to like, you know, writing short plays uh -huh. and I actually had opportunities to direct there. Um, it's an amazing school that I was extremely lucky to live near. Um, but that was sort of, that's what got me going. Um, and I, again, I was really into comedy at the time 
so I thought I was going to like, you know, go be a stand up or, you know, go write for late night shows or something like that. Went to New York in 2011 and, um, sorry. Oh, good. Went to New York in 2011, you know, had that first year transferred into the film program three years there. And, you know, I love New York, but, uh, it's cold and there's no beach and, uh, <laughs> the industry there is very different than it is out here. So I knew that when I graduated, I was going to move out here. Um, went home for the summer, uh, got my car registered with Uber, worked, uh, at a restaurant as like a, not even a server, but like basically like my backup plans had a little bit of money saved. Uh, at the end of the summer, I drove my car out here. Great trip. I highly recommend driving across the country. Um, first month, you know, I didn't get anything. Like Mm -hmm. I was like calling, I was literally like, you can find lists of productions that are going on i was like calling literally every production being like hey i just graduated from nyu film school i just want to be a pa nothing so you know if you think that your film degree is gonna get you a job that's not true um and then you know i just got really lucky like one day about a month in i saw this job assistant to a music video director Mm -hmm. And I applied and I got it. And that, you know, you could say, I mean, I'm not going to say NYU going to film school didn't help, but that's not the reason I got the job by any means. Um, And so that director ended up being Dave Myers. Uh, So I became his assistant. And as soon, you know, I basically just worked as hard as I could. Try to learn as much as I could, as quickly as I could. I worked nights. I worked weekends for the first year. Um, It was a lot, but I learned quickly. Um... Started, you know, got to see how he came up with video ideas, how Mm -hmm. he pitched ideas, how he sold ideas. You know, I got a billion ideas shut down. Like, you know, it was tough. It was he. He's a tough dude, but that's because he's really, really great. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, just learned a lot from him. I highly recommend assistant jobs. You know, I mean, if you if you want to be a director and you're assisting for um like an agent, you know. Again, like it's all, if you want to be a director, you have to shoot. That's just plain and simple. You have to shoot whether you're, you know, working at 7 Eleven or whether you're the assistant to an agent. Um, if you get lucky enough to be assistant to a director, obviously it's, you know, a very rare but amazing opportunity. You know, I was very lucky that Dave was, like, you know, uh, very supportive of me mm-hmm. and taught me a lot. You know, I'm sure there are some directors whose assistants, you know, just do laundry and stuff like right, that. Right. But, but yeah, assistantships are a great way to meet people mm-hmm. and to really like get a look on the inside. And I'll tell you, I learned more in three months working for Dave Myers than I did in like four years, three years of film school, like hands down, just like it's, yeah, you don't need to go to film school, but you need to get out there and you need to shoot. Yeah. I, I like that. I mean, especially the fact when you made that leap to, move from New York to LA. Um, and I kind of want to go back to that point because that's a big jump. Yeah. Uh, while a lot of your friends are still in New York, you decided to, you know, go the opposite route and just go straight to LA. I mean, the, especially the fact that this is where all, you know, film production, video production is, but, um, can you take me through that process of like, wh- yeah, sure. how, how did you decide to really just go across the country and just go to LA? Well, LA is just hands down the place to be if you want to be in film or entertainment, like without a doubt, like they're always, you know, Atlanta's got some good stuff going on. New York's got some good stuff going on. Vancouver, you know, Toronto, like I'm not saying you can't do your thing there, but this is where everything entertainment happens. Hands down hands down like it's so much bigger out here um the weather sucks in new york (laughs) now i love new york uh my senior year me and my buddy pa'd on like a million dollar indie film and it was one of the toughest experiences of my entire life it was the middle of the winter you know pa'ing on this very low budget film and it was like you know like i don't know i sort of saw my route like just being a PA in New York on these like indie films. And I was like, I, I think I can do better. Like, I don't, this isn't really what I'm going for. Mm. So I moved to LA and yeah, it helps. I love the beach and I love the warm weather. <laughs> um, Doesn't but hurt. yeah, man, like, and again, like most of my friends stayed. Um, 
and they're doing great. But mm-hmm. uh, but for me, it was like you know, if I wanna, if I'm going all in on this, you know, I got to be in L.A. Right. And it, you know, it ended up working out. Really, I got really lucky. I got really lucky. But luck is opportunity meets preparation. So I was prepared when the opportunity came, mm-hmm. but it was super lucky. Like. I always think about if I had just gotten one of those PA gigs that I had called in, like, and then never have worked for Dave Myers and like, uh-huh. you know, it's where I'd be today. Right. Well, I mean, I think, like you said, doing all those videos beforehand while you're in New York kind of gave you a little bit more experience once you head into LA. But once you got to LA, I know you're talking about, you know, you're just, you found whatever job you could find, you know, making little money because for most, if they were to make that trip, and not really knowing what's going to happen, it's scary, right? Yeah. Were you, were you, did you feel any sort of like fear going into that? Oh, yeah. And this is, if, if you're like, if you're timid or you're afraid of uncertainty, this is not the right industry for you by any means because I'm constantly terrified. I'm doing well right now and I'm still like, it's like, especially as a freelance director, it's like, you know, you eat what you kill. And, you know, as soon as I wrap a video and I feel incredible, The next day, it's like, okay, well, what's next, you know? And, like, how am I going to get through next month? And how am I going to get through the month after that? And how am I going to have to get through the month after that? So, yeah, no, it's just a natural part of the industry. I, um, again, I'm arrogant, you know? So, I, I, you know, I thought I believed in myself. But also, you know, I think sometimes things that scare you, like, are, like, exactly what you need to do. Right. You know? And a lot of people let that stop them. And then... You know, really, like, uh, especially just coming out of college, like, I knew, like, I could go fail in L.A. for two years and, like, I'd only be 24. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I could Mm -hmm. go to grad school or something. Right. Like, I could go a different option, but I had to, you know, give it a shot. Um, So, I think, you know, if you have youth on your side, whether you're 18, 22, you know, if you're, you know, if you're, like, older and you have kids and a lot more responsibilities, like, you know... It's hard to do it, but, you know, I basically, like, it was the time. If there was any time to just go try, it was right then, so. Yeah. Did you feel anything, like, in your gut that kind of led you to do that? Yeah, I mean, I just, I felt like, you know, um, like, New York wasn't, like, I'd been in New York for four years, Mm -hmm. and, like, I didn't see a clear path there. Mm -hmm. And L.A. is just, like, you know, I guess my junior year, spring break i flew to san francisco drove down the one to la and as soon as i got here i was like oh yeah this is it this is definitely the place to be um and then just like in terms of you know jobs and opportunities it's just like a hundred times more than new york you Mm -hmm. know what i mean and like bigger jobs like the biggest artists in the world like the biggest you know movie directors in the world they live here Mm -hmm. you know they might have a second house but they live here and they shoot a lot here so it's like you know, if you, if you can, but yeah, I mean, when I was driving across the country, like every stop we made, it would, I just like, was like, you know, get more and more sick to my (laughs) stomach, but you know, I had enough money for three months, you know, I had Uber and a little bit of restaurant experience if things didn't go well. And when I got here, I, you know, I just literally started calling people. Like you just gotta like, you gotta hustle. And, um, and if you hustle, like, you should get lucky, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, not everyone gets lucky, but I did, so. Nice. I mean, yeah. I So, like, when you were networking and trying to find, because um, you said you started out as a PA. Yeah, so I had PA'd in New York on indie films. You know, mm-hmm. I'd done every job basically through film school, but film set, a film school set is extremely different than a real mm-hmm. set, obviously. So I knew, like, I obviously knew what a PA was, and I was like, okay, you know, I PA'd on this little indie film now. I went to NYU film school. Like, I can get a PA job. Well, again, there are no guarantees. Um, But, yeah, so, I mean, I was looking for anything and everything. I didn't really want to go into an agency or management, but that Mm -hmm. was always, like, you know, something that I was considering if things didn't work out. But my main goal was to get into production as quickly as possible. So, um, I again, I, like, found some website where you can find a list of, mm-hmm. of every f- thing that's shooting. I just called every single one. I didn't get a single one. Um, but then I think I was on this website. It was called a, uh, anonymous production assistant 
looking for ways to become a production assistant and they I guess reposted the variety ad for the music video director and I didn't even think I had a shot. Like I kinda just fired off an email mm-hmm. and I got an interview and interview with Dave and got lucky. There you go. So I I like that because like you you tried to find different avenues of just trying to get a job and and so when you got that assistant job with Dave Myers um I know you're saying it wasn't easy at first uh so how did you progress into kind of like the position that you are now because he told you just to keep shooting um get more experience how did how did that progress yeah so um you know I Dave knew I wanted to be a director I made that very clear from the outset so you know um he immediately sort of you know asked for my creative opinions and you know there was just a huge learning curve of what's cool you know and this man this is a dude who shot 200 you know over 200 videos some of the most iconic stuff ever so it's like you know, you think like, oh, like you, you, you know, you pitch something that you think is cool. And then like, you know, he point, he did it twice before and someone else <laughs> just did it and it's not original. And so just really that learning curve of like, you know, what is cool and what is cool to him really. But mm-hmm. like in that process of, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, impress him, you start to gain your own voice mm-hmm. and, you know, you start to, you know, come up with ideas and you know at first it's like you know anything that he says is is you know this and then you know a year or two in he doesn't like an idea you know but you think it's cool like you're a little you know like you just save that one for yourself right. later down the road but um but yeah so i learned a lot from dave basically about uh writing and selling ideas so this is true for pretty much films and TV uh, and commercials for sure. But for music videos, um, if you're not an established music video uh, artist, um, most likely a track will go out to multiple directors. And the directors then put together a treatment, which is basically a pitch deck, which is basically like a mood board, sometimes more like a storyboard, sometimes more like a script um, with images that sort of set a tone and with the written word of what you're actually going to do to supplement for where images uh, can't say something. So I really got to see Dave's process on that. And, you know, I got to start contributing to that a little bit. Um, and that, you know, is something they never teach you in film school. Uh, and why you call me, I want to do a treatment writing class because it's the most important thing. So like basically, you know, um, but that's how you present your ideas. Like, you know, one treatment is all a red studio. One treatment is in a jungle. One treatment is under the ocean. You know what I mean? Um, and then from there, the management and the artists, you know, decide what direction they want to go with. And then that's how you, that's how you get jobs. But before you can even get tracks sent to you, you got to go out and shoot your buddy from the third grade. Um, and you got to do five videos for him. You know what I mean? Um, so, so anyway, so I was learning a lot from him about, you know, how he pre-visualizes the video, how he comes up with his ideas, um, how something goes from a treatment, you know, pictures and some writing to, you know, a video. Um, but, uh, you know, I would, I, you know, I'd always ask him like, what I should I do? And he was just like, you gotta go, you gotta go shoot. So, you know, I had done those films in in NYU, but I had never done a video. And so then that Christmas when I went home, you know, my buddy happened to have some songs, you know, and we shot a bunch of videos. And again, like, you know, I learned so much from that. Um, and then, you know, when the time came, um, long story short, you know, we did Humble. We did uh, Lovely. We, we were working with TDE a lot and I got to know the team over there. And, uh, you know, Dave was nice enough, you know, to let him know that I wanted to be a director and, you know, I'm not sure whether they ever watched those videos, but I had something to show them if they wanted to Mm -hmm. um, see something, which I didn't have, you know, a year ago. Like, no matter how much work I did for Dave, I still had nothing, you know. And now I suddenly had four videos. They weren't weren't good, but they were still music videos. Um, And so from there, uh, Dave Free over at TDE 
was kind enough to give me a little five grand serve video, which I wrote, you know, a hundred thousand dollar idea for, um, underwater, <laughs> like mansion, cars, girls. Anyway, we did it for five grand and, uh, you know, um, I'm proud of the video. I think it's still on my website. Um, I hopefully it looks like more than five grand, but, uh, it taught me, you know, even just like, you know, know what your budget is, you know, mm -hmm. like don't write something that you can't do, but it worked out. And from there, um, from there I was able to sort of, uh, get a rep. Uh, there are music video reps. Um, I'm rep right now by this, uh, by Jamie Rabinu, who's like, uh, at large, she's awesome. But, um, and I got to know her through Dave, obviously, but I got, a, I got rep by this awesome girl named Emily Sanders at Revoer. Um, she's got a bunch of directors and, you know, all the production companies have directors signed and they're independent reps. Um, if you shoot videos, you can send them your stuff and if they like it, they might sign you, but you have to have videos. Um, and yeah, I was lucky enough to have her, you know, sort of rep me and I was able to get, you know, a 10 grand video and then a 15 grand video and then a 30 grand video. Um, and you know, I, I shot like a couple of videos for Elohim. I did some, some other stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, then I got, uh, J rock rotation and you know, that's, that's sort of where I'm at. Um, I will say, uh, actually, actually, never mind, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say that that's how I kind of first heard about you because I, I listened to, you know, TD, been listening to Kendrick and J Rock and Schoolboy Q for a while now. And I know that J Rock has been doing really well lately with, you know, a lot of his tracks that he's coming out. And when I saw that video for Rotation, I really liked the concept and that was a really cool concept. And, you know, I, there's some videos where you see, you know, with spinning, turning, twisting, you would feel like maybe you get dizzy or something. I, I didn't feel that. I felt like it was just the right amount of movement to where you were able to really see the artist or whoever was in frame and have that same movement around it to where it, it meshed well mm -hmm. and i really like that Thanks. um so how how were you able to because i know you pitched that idea initially to have that rotation spinning camera how is that done if you don't mind sharing yeah so um it's a 360 photo booth rig uh orca view i think provided it for us it was only like 600 bucks you know it's always the cheap stuff that's the best stuff um but anyway it's you know a platform like this table and then it has an arm and you can't mount an Alexa on it yet, but you can mount an A7S. And they do it like at Comic-Con and stuff like that. And I, that's where I'd seen it. And like basically, like instead of taking a picture, you got a 360 video and you could like, you know, wield a sword at it or whatever they do at Comic-Con. Um, and, uh, but I'd also seen a video where it was spinning really, really quickly. And that was really cool. And I hadn't really seen that before because, you know, um, if you do a dolly spin, it's only going to go as fast as the dolly can go. So it was an opportunity to spin the camera very quickly. Uh, just so happened the song I got was Rotation. I I'd pitched the idea to uh, a couple other artists that liked it, but Rotation was the perfect one. Um, and then it was the decision. Um, like, you know, a lot of people reference, a lot of people say I stole that ASAP Rocky thing. I mean, there are plenty of videos that spin every which way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, one of, I mean, I love that video that he did, but... I don't know why, like, that was only the first minute of the video. So it was very important to me that, like, we were going to commit to spinning. Um, obviously, you can only fit, like, four people on the platform. Um, and it can't move. So basically came up with the idea to just do all dolly spins. And, you know, in some places, it's, like, you know, when he's at the flag or when he's at the uh, street sign, mm -hmm. you know, you can tell it's a real clean spin. Other times, it was, you know, tons of tracks. Sometimes it's curving. Sometimes it's not. Um, but yeah, we shot in Watts, which is where J rocks from. It's where top dogs from. And, you know, I really appreciate the neighborhood really came out. They were awesome. You know, we had a great time. Um, and yeah, so 
but yeah, like, you know, um, looking for camera ideas, it's always hard. You never know where you're going to find that kind of stuff, but, um, that stuff like can really make a video, uh, can make it stand out. You know, you take out that move, that video is pretty generic, but you put that move in there and it kind of like adds like a little bit of fresh life to it. Um, and that was something that I had, you know, like an idea I had had and pitched to Dave and he rejected it. And, you know, he'll, he, he'd say that I pitched it wrong, but you know, <laughs> um, regardless, like, you know, it, it all just came from, you know, just preparation and, and, you know, coming up with ideas. You know, I, I was lucky enough to get paid to, you know, come up with ideas like every day for two and a half years. So, um, that kind of conditions you, um, a lot of people don't get that opportunity, but you know, you just got to do it. Like you got to do it on your free time. Like you got to shoot and you got to think of ideas. You got to watch stuff. You got to see what you think is cool. And you got to notice, you know, why do you think it's cool? Like, what are they doing? And what, what aren't you doing? You know, it's not, it's not all just about budget. It's like, you know, it's just, it's really about tone always. Right. And like speaking of ideas, I mean, the new, newest video that you put out, Tap Out mm -hmm. with J-Rock, I really like that concept as well. The, uh, it was projected, uh, projection on the dancers. Yeah. So a lot, a lot of people think we did mapping. We didn't do any mapping. Um, basically another thing I had found while working for Dave is, you know, I mean, I, I, I I'm pretty, I, I do a lot of research into art and photography and stuff like that. Um, and just, you know, culture. And I found, uh, this super dope dude, Danny Olivier out of Paris. Uh, and he shoots these beautiful nude body projections. Um, and so like, you know, I knew it was like, it, I knew it looked beautiful, but, um, you know, it's much, you know, anyone can just light someone with a projector, but what makes him special is that he's been, he, that's his thing. You know what I mean? And what really makes him special is the designs that he has created. Um, so it's not just, you know, so anyway, when I pitched the idea, cause after I shot rotation, they said they wanted me to do tap out and my brief was Atlanta strip club. So my like immediate first thought was just like, okay, how do I make this strip club video? Not your like stereotypical strip club video. Um, and so then this idea, like, you know, came to like, well, what if we, you know, lit the strippers like this, you know, less focusing, like, you know, still have it be it's still a stripper video. They're still super mm -hmm. sexy and stuff like that. But like, how do we, how do we put a little twist on it? Right. You know, let's do it through light. Um, we were really worried. We were going to have to try to figure out how to create the projection patterns. That would have been very difficult. Um, I wrote a letter to Danny Olivier, uh, rotation had just come out. Um, and he's a super cool dude and he agreed to come to Atlanta and like, you know, be the second unit director. He lit the girls. Um, and you know, I, who knows what would have happened if, if he didn't agree to do that, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, it's projectors, but it's never as easy as it looks. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky enough to have access to all of his patterns and we shot it one day with J-Rock, um, and then the second day, just the girls. Because I also knew Jeremiah wasn't going to be in the video. So I had, like, two minutes of the song to fill mm -hmm. without without Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. um, so it needed a concept that really wasn't, you know, too reliant on the actual artist. Um, so, yeah, we shot that in Atlanta, uh, and it came out a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Definitely a great concept for sure. Thanks, yeah, it's something because I haven't seen that before, and and you know it's and I like that because it's you don't want it to be like everything else. It's just that one little thing that you can tweak that makes it a little different. Um, so in terms of like your creative process, can you kind of take me through that? Like, how do you stay creative? What inspires you for a lot of these projects and pitches for as sure. a director? Well. Music videos, it, it always starts with a song, um, you know, like just listening to the vibe of the song and, you know, seeing where it takes you. Um, but, you know, a big part of, again, treatments, selling ideas um, is you have to, you know, put it, your idea into words and images. So I look at a lot of images 
um, that's something, you know, that insiders know is that you can find a lot of inspiration from images, you know, just simply whether you use all studio images, you know, that means your video is going to be in a studio or whether you use all super raw film grainy type images. Is that how you want your video to look? Do you want it to look super polished? Do you want it to look, you know, red? Do you want it to be, is it all a lighting piece or like, you know, is it a desert video where you're not gonna have any lights, but what do you, you have a white Bentley, you know, mobbing around. Um, so, you know, I look at a study photography, fashion photography, you know, that's, they always say that hype was really into fashion photography and you can see in a lot of his videos where he shoots girls, like it's very flat fashion lighting, you know? And then so, um, but not all of his videos are like that, but you know, looking at images, looking at movies, you know, do you want your movie to look like Blade Runner? I mean, do you want your video to look like Blade Runner? Or do you want it to look like, uh, you know, Citizen Kane? Like what, what, what do you want this thing to look like and what is happening? Um, and a lot of times you can use images as inspiration for style, for lighting. Um, and then also, you know, videos like not, don't reference, don't ever reference a music video in your music video treatment, but, um, you know, seeing what other people have done, you know, and watching movies, you know, um, it provides tons of inspiration. Um, again, for look concept, you know, and so with, th- with those two videos, you know, it was just, they were ideas that I had had. And, you know, one was that, you know, s- some rabbit hole on YouTube, mm-hmm. I found this, you know, 360 photo booth thing, or I don't even know how I found it, but you know, I knew like, okay, this is an idea. Uh, got to get the right track. And then same thing, like, you know, on some Tumblr somewhere, you know, I became acquainted with Danny Olivier and followed him on Instagram. Um, Instagram is a great place for inspiration, you know, and to stay current. Um, magazines, fashion, photographers, you know, movies, TV, really just, you know, just keep consuming, you know, and like ideas will come to you, you know, but, um, yeah, it is tough, but you know, we all go through waves, but I think, you know, like when, when you're really stuck, like sometimes seeing other things, even if you're reading a book or something like that, you know, like it, it causes Mm -hmm. your synapses to start sparkling and stuff like that. So, yeah. Like getting, getting kind of, um, different experiences from different angles mm-hmm. kind of triggers that creativity. Cause that's kind of what I I've noticed when interviewing different types of creatives, the ones it kind of varies in terms of what their inspiration is. But for the most part, um, they say that they try to do something different or they are maybe a filmmaker, but they hang out with a lot of um, let's say music artists and they bounce off ideas from each other and just just takes that one click to where you know something sparks something new so yeah there's definitely some truth to what you said for sure on that one yeah i mean i'll just say like you could spend all day trying to come up with an idea for a video and then you know you're done for the day and you're just watching tv and like a commercial comes on and like you know you're like oh i never thought about a cornfield i'm like let's do it all in a cornfield you know so it can come from anywhere. You have to just always be open to it. Um, sometimes you look for it. Sometimes it finds you. But, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. So when you are putting together, let's say you get um, get hired to do, uh, to direct for a video production shoot for a music video. Um, were there any challenges during that process while trying to put the music video together because you have a vision and there's also times when something doesn't go the right way as you wanted it to. Uh, Do you have an example of something that happened on a shoot and how did you overcome that? Uh, Yeah. um, You know, there's never enough money. Your budget's never going to be big enough, you know, so it's constantly trying to, you know, uh, figure out how to make things work, you know, I think it's um, important, you know, to find someone to be your producer, even if it's just your friend or something like that, like someone whose job it is to, you know, try to make things work. You know, I was lucky enough to know some producers, um, but at the same time, they were all, you know, big. So, you know, uh, I think you had Andrea on the show. She mm-hmm. she actually produced a video for me. 
um, just finding people like that, that are, you know, hustlers and, you know, understand production, um, is super helpful as a director. You don't have to worry about like, you know, insurance and shit like that. Um, but, uh, stuff I had to overcome, uh, actually on that, that video, uh, I did with her, um, I'm not going to say the name, but, uh, we were shooting the desert and the whole, whole pitch of the video was the, the artists and this girl were like riding dune buggies around. Like that was the pitch. Like I was going to shoot like a car commercial and then, you know, shoot. I had like two performances with him, but it was mostly going to be like, how can I make these things look epic? Um, and on the test ride, uh, the first buggy goes down. So I lose a buggy, never gets back up and running. Then, um, the tire blows on the second one. We replace it. The tire blows again. Oh man. So we're down to a street tire. So, and then I ended up, you know, I went for my money shot, um, which was the, you know, the guy in the front and this car doing donuts. And I shot that for about an hour. Cause I was like, I got to get this shot. I'm on my last tire. And I didn't realize that, um, if you, if you run the car in first gear for an hour, like we basically broke the car. So oh. my whole pitch was this dune buggy, you know, super cool stuff. And I'm out of dune buggies and it's like two o'clock and like, they're like, you know, we're shooting till sunset. Um, so that really, you know, just reminded me that, you know, we, we made, we made it work, you know, we shot a couple other, you know, angles and performances and stuff like that. But, you know, you gotta be prepared if something like that happens. And you also have to know when you're working with stuff like that, like it just doesn't always, it doesn't always work. You know what I mean? Like you have to be, you have to think about those sort of things. That's something I, I didn't think about, um, on tap out, you know, we were shooting the girls, uh, on the stage. And then at the end of the day, we were going to shoot them on the pole. And, um, we had put a bunch of oil on them and I didn't know that they can't hold on to the pole when they're oiled up. So they had to take a shower and then we needed like, there's some sort of like grip that you put on poles. Um, so they don't slide down. We didn't have that. So, and that, you know, I never would have known unless I shot the video and, you know, basically, um, you know, as early as I found that out, we just, you know, went to go get it and, you know, I had to, had to shoot more stage stuff and less pole stuff, but, mm. but it ended up working. But, um, but yeah, I mean, just basically like, you know, it's Murphy's law, like everything goes wrong, like always. So, you know, being really prepared, understanding what you're shooting and, and, and like understanding what could go wrong is really important. And then, you know, not putting all your marbles into one thing like the doom buggies and then not, you know, being fully prepared if the doom buggies go down, you know what I mean? So, that, yeah, that's, I guess, what I say. Yeah, so I, at least have, like, a plan B in terms of yeah. shots yes. and concept, in a way. Yeah, yeah. just assume things are going to go wrong. <laughs> but again, the more you shoot, the more, like, you start to think like that. You know what I mean? So if I hadn't done that, you know, I wouldn't have, you know, it, it helped me going forward, you know. Right, right. Because then you learn, and then, like, the next time, let's say there, that's, that type of concept is in another video, then you know, you know, what goes into it. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. nothing really goes wrong. Um, that, but it always that goes much. wrong. Something so. goes wrong, something but at least you're prepared wrong. for it. You exactly. Know? Yeah, exactly. So um, nowadays, I know you're doing a lot of music videos. Is that your primary projects, primary projects that you're doing right now? Yeah, I love videos. I love doing them. Um, I want to do a bunch more. I want to work with huge artists, you know. Um, I... You know, I'm hoping to get into commercials to help uh, pay the bills a little bit. Um, and they're similar. They're both short form. Uh, and then the goal is, you know, to do movies. Um, but a lot of my favorite directors, you know, David Fincher, Spike Jones, um, they did videos and they learned on videos and they went and made, you know, great films. So mm -hmm. I'm really just trying to shoot as much as I can until it gets boring, you know, or, or like, you know, I don't, you know, until the right script comes along or until mm -hmm. my movie shows itself to me, you know, but right. the goal is definitely to do films. But right now I'm just, again, I'm trying to shoot as much as I can and make all the mistakes now so that when, when I get that opportunity to do a film, I will, you know, I'll, I'll know what I'm doing a right. lot more. Right. And I don't, I think this was before 
you did, you know, rotation and, and tap out with J-Rock, but you also worked with two chains, right? Yeah. Um, the one connection that NYU ever gave me, um, my buddy, uh, the most talented kid in my class, this guy, Sebastian Stagai. I butchered his last name. Sorry, Seb. Um, he's super talented. He was by far the most talented person in my NYU class. He ended up going, he stayed in New York, ended up becoming Def Jam's in-house uh, director, producer, or whatever. Um, but he shot like a ton of low budget videos for Def Jam um, and was able to build a you know huge reel very quickly. Um, and, uh, you know, they needed someone to shoot chains. Like he had a blimp that was promoting his album and like, they needed someone like, you know, like that day or something like that, or, like the next day. And that was, you know, the one time where he, you know, he called me and was like, yeah, like, you know, I need it. We need you to, to do this. So it was, you know, thank you, Seb. Um, you know, the one time that worked out well, but, uh, but yeah, you know, I'm, and I'm a big fan of Most Expensivist to Change Show on Viceland, so I was stoked, and we showed up, and you know, shot it nice and quick, shot it docu style. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's a super smart dude, super cool dude, um, and I was, you know, honored to work with him. Nice, nice. So that was kind of like, was it like kind of last minute type thing? Where super you, last minute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So how did you come up with like that concept right away? No, so. He's the blimp was gonna be flying over like I guess the Lakers game or something like uh-huh. that. So they had the blimp. Okay. Um, and they needed to do a little like you know two minute piece with the blimp. Right. And it was always supposed to be like you know why is he putting his album on a blimp? Well, the album was called Rapper Go to the uh-huh. League. So I didn't come up with the idea to put it on a blimp. That was all two chains. I was just mm-hmm. the one that was lucky enough to come shoot him when he went to go check it out. Gotcha. Uh, we wanted to get him flying in the blimp, but. He wasn't down, um, <laughs> which I get. I got to find a blimp, though. They're weird. They're really weird. Yeah, how, how is that? They're it's just different like, from a plane. Yeah, no, nah, dude. They're, like, floating around, and, like, you feel like you crash any second. Oh, it's, man. It's a bizarre experience, Jeez. but it was cool. Nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got that under your belt, too, and got more experience from that shoot, so that's a plus for sure. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, as a director, you know, when you're on set, and you're working with these artists and the talent and you and you also have the crew right that you're working with as well um you know what what has helped you in terms of communicating your vision um you know leading the the crew and making sure everything works as well as possible on set yeah well find people that you trust to work with you know that's the most important thing uh the Dude who's pretty much shot all my stuff, Elias Talbot, very, very phenomenal DP. Um, you know, he did a little, we did like, you know, one of my, one of my first videos, like 10 grand or something like that. And it was all lighting and, you know, he made it look exactly like I wanted to. And I was like, I immediately trusted him and I've called him for every single project since because it's like, I know like there's just trust there. You know what I mean? Like I, like, of course there are tons of DPs I'd love to work with. And I hope to work with. Um, but there's nothing like just knowing that if I tell him I want it to look sort of like this, like it's going to look like that. Mm-hmm. So trust is huge. Um, clarity of concept treatment, you know, if your treatment is just like, you know, at the beach and that's all it is. One line, we go to the beach, you know, then it's very much open to interpretation. If, you know, if you, you know, want to shoot at Matador state beach on, you know, 60 millimeter film, do it all black and white. Everyone's wearing black you know, the artist is in white, you know, they're doing, she's in the water at some point, she's making, you know, you build a huge sandcastle, it's her house, you know, like those sort of things are what you, you pitch. And, you know, the more clear you are, the more, the easier it is um, for people to, you know, take what you're saying and and either do it or make it better. The more you don't know what you're doing, the the harder everyone, everyone's job is going to be. Um, so yeah, once you have a, you know, a good crew, like, um, you know, he's Elias is dealing with, you know, his, his grips and his gaffers, you know, I just have to talk to him. He makes it happen. You know, same thing with styling. Like, you know, you find a good stylist, you know what they're going to wear. Um, and then like, I don't actually have to go dress the person they're doing that. You know, Mm -hmm. you get a good AD to keep you on schedule, to keep everyone pumped up. Very important, especially for videos. Um, and then it just comes down to, you know, working with the artist and, you know, really just trying to, um, you know, make a connection with them. And cause once you're cool, like then, 
once they trust you, then, you know, you're good. But it's always hard to get that trust, especially the first time you work with someone. Um, but, you know, once once they 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 trust you, they'll they'll pretty much let you do mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. Um, it's when they haven't worked with you yet that they're like, you know, when I put that thing spinning around J-Rock, I think, you know, he was like, he was kind of looking at me funny, you know. But then when he saw it, he was like, oh, like, I see what you were going for. And then on tap out, it was like, you know, where you want me, man? Right. You know, so. right. But he's great. He's super cool. He's a great performer. The album is amazing. Check it out. Um, so I've been lucky to work with like really, really cool artists like him. Like he was the man. Nice. So, for example, when you were working with like J Rock, I mean, how did you help gain his trust? You know, especially you have that contraption and all that stuff. I mean, was there something that you said, something that you did, the way you communicated? No, to me, I think, you know, it's just the work speaks for itself. So, um, you know, I don't think, you know, the first day I I really, you know, barely talked to him because, um, you know, you don't want to be overbearing or be weird or anything like that. You know, do your job. Um, if they want to say what's up to you, they'll say what's up to you. If they don't, they don't. It's all good. Do what you got to do. Do your job. And then I think, you know, once you start playing back some takes, you know, it's, it's dangerous to play back takes because if they don't like it, you're, <laughs> it's going to be a long day. But if they do like it, then, and they suddenly see what it's going to be and they're excited about it, then, you know, once, then you have their trust and, you know, it just goes from there. So I think after the first day, I think, you know, when he saw back some of the takes, I think he realized that, you know, he was going to like the video and then. You know, had a, I mean, he was super cool both days, but, you know, was talking to him a little bit more the second day. And then, you know, by the time we go to Atlanta, it's like, you know, we're buddies and, you know, getting along and he's the man. He really is. But, uh, but yeah, I think, you know, it's really all about trust, you know, for everyone. And, you know, it's the artists that are putting themselves out there. So they have to trust, you know, that you're not going to make them look bad. And the best way to show them you're not going to make them look bad is to have, you know, real and be able to see, like, look, I made this person look cool. You know, Dave always said to me that the best way, the way you get artists you want to work with is that they see something that you did that they want or that they like. You know what I mean? So whether you're doing a video for another artist, you know, a big artist or your buddy, if it goes, you know, goes viral or gets picked up on Vimeo or something like that. And it's something cool, like it, your your life can change overnight because of the internet. So, you know, I think that's always the goal is to make stuff that, you know, people think it's cool and that like people say basically like, I want that, you know, I want something like that. And then that's how you, you know, start shooting their videos. Nice. Yeah. So it it's something that just doesn't happen right away, but like you said, you have to do your job to the best of your ability. And over time, if it happens to, you know, connect naturally, then it happens. Yeah. I mean, it's been, you know, years for me. Um, Things are starting to go well, but I still don't know what my next video is going to be. You know what I mean? Like um, I'm still just starting, but again, you know, making a lot of mistakes, shooting and making mistakes just get you more, like more and more prepared for the next shoot. And hopefully your videos just get better. If they're getting worse then I don't know what to tell you, but they should be getting better. And then yeah. when, you know, the right opportunity comes, you do give it everything you got and hopefully people will like it and they call you and they want you to do the second video. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think you're doing great. You're progressing great. I mean, each video is getting better than the next. So why do you keep doing what you're doing as a director? Man, I love music and I love video and I love music videos. Like it's, you know, it's a weird, they don't really get the respect they deserve. A lot of people don't watch them. Um, you know, for a while that you could say that they were uh, sort of out of style, like irrelevant, but I think they're coming back really strong right now. I think um, they're just fun. You get to do things that you don't, you know, normally get to do and you get to experiment and you know like the very nature of them is that you want them to be cool you know what i mean like you could do a short film you could do an oscar-winning short film that's like you know in an apartment with two people talking i mean i think paul thomas anderson's like first short film is like two people in a diner talking and it's a great short film but you know you're not getting to like you know light people in red and like try to blow stuff up or like learn that dune buggies like shouldn't be written in first gear for like an hour you know like that's really what is exciting to me is like you know, getting 
paid not a lot but getting paid to go shoot something cool like that's that's what i like to do um and videos are you know a great place to do that definitely i mean uh, yeah yeah what were you gonna say oh no i was gonna say like you know if you start out shooting commercials like you know you might get paid a little bit more but like you know you're shooting you know you're shooting a product but videos you actually get to shoot you get to work with people and you know i, I just love music and yeah, I love making videos. I'm going to keep doing it for a long time. Yeah, dude. Yeah, keep it up, man. So if you were to have like just one form of advice for your younger self, what would that be? Something that you experience now that you probably... Yeah, I touched on this. It would just be to shoot more like, again, like, you know, my four years in New York. Like, I guess if you go to my Vimeo page, there's some films up there. But like, you know... I really didn't take advantage. Like I really, you know, thought like I was in the film program at NYU and like, you know, I just needed to make the film for the class and you know, it was going to be fine. And it was, it did end up being fine. But like, even if I had been an English major, like, you know, if I had started shooting videos and coming up with ideas and stuff like that, um, you know, in New York and you know, who knows, I may have never even had to have been an assistant because I may have done a video. So like, you know, ASAP Rocky liked, and then suddenly I'm shooting an ASAP video before ASAP's ASAP. You know what I mean? Like those sort of things. Like, um, I just think that like, you know, really the earlier you can get stuff shot, the better and the more. And so that's, that would be my advice to myself in New York. It would be like, whether you go into the film school or not, like, you know, make a habit to shoot once a month, like shoot once a month, like do it, like force yourself to do it. Um, and if you, you know, you don't have an idea like just go out and shoot something and then look at it and you'll be like oh i kind of wish you know i had you know had a car for this and then suddenly all right well let's go get a car or something like that you know but you just can't force yourself to not go shoot because you're not thinking of things like just get out there and do it find an artist who every single artist in the world wants videos especially someone who'll do them for free um, and you never know who's going to be the next, you know, Kendrick or J-Rock or ASAP. So find those people, you know, go to the music department of your school or whatever, post an ad on Craigslist. Like I guarantee there's a lot of people with a lot of songs that all would love you to do a video for free. And, um, that's how you learn. So yeah, that'd be my advice to my younger self. Like shoot more, shoot way more. I like that. Yeah. Get more experience for sure. Yeah. So Last question. I know you touched upon this and, you know, your future plans, eventually doing commercials and eventually doing films. Um, is there anything you like to share in terms of maybe like the immediate future for music videos, any projects that you're allowed to share? Um, I got two videos um, that hopefully will happen. Uh, I can't say the names. Uh, one is more of a low budget video, but... I really, really love the idea. I think it's gonna be a really beautiful video. Um, very VHS-y, very 80s um, performance video. Um, and then there's one that I'm up for that would be by far my biggest video by a lot. Um, and I would get to travel a little bit for it. So I can't say what that is, but fingers crossed. Um, and yeah, um, so, you know, two videos in the works, always writing ideas for other ones, trying to book other ones. Um, and, you know, just trying to, you know, stay inspired and keep coming up with ideas. Even, you know, what I'll say is like, I write, you know, tons and tons and tons of treatments that do not book like, you know, like one in like 30 or something like that. You know what I mean? I was lucky enough with J Rock that T D kinda knew me and trusted me and just let me do it. Um but even when you're writing ideas and they don't get chosen, you still you still have that idea. So like it's all good and it's all just building up your portfolio of ideas and then, you know, you have thirty rejected treatments and you know, you gotta write another treatment and you know, you never want to reuse like the exact same treatment or anything like that. But suddenly you're like, if you're having a day where you're not inspired or something like that, like suddenly you have like, oh, what about this idea? Oh yeah, that's cool. Like again, like I pitched the spinning camera thing to a bunch of people and they all liked it and it never happened. And then lucky enough, like rotation comes along and, and it wasn't like, you know, I thought of that before. It was like, I had that idea because I failed trying to get so many other videos, like, but I had that. 
Um, and so then when the right, you know, time came, I was able to, to use it. Yeah. And I think I like how you're saying that those failures didn't really set you back. They're more as a teaching tool and it helped you prepare yourself for future, future roles, future jobs, um, future projects and ideas. Yeah. And that's not to say that failing doesn't suck. Like it sucks every single time and it hurts. Um, and it's not fun, but you know, if, if you don't have, if you're not ready to fail, then, you know, you're never going to get better. And this industry, you're going to fail way more times than you succeed. So it's something you got to get used to and be okay with. Uh, some people are better dealing with than other, but you know, yeah, I'm trying to put a positive spin on it all, but it's, it still sucks when you don't get a video or something like that that you're hyped on. That's okay. I mean, we keep pushing forward and uh, mm -hmm. I love the hustle, man. I love what you're doing. And, you know, again, I just want to say thank you for being on the podcast and to all of you that are watching and listening right now. Thank you. I hope you, you know, got something great out of that. I definitely learned some myself and um, I'll be. Go know, shoot. Go, go shoot, shoot right now. Go shoot. He's shooting right now. <laughs> That's it. Peace. Peace. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Thanks again for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll be placing Daniel's social media links in the show notes so you can stay connected. And if you got great content out of this episode and know someone that can benefit from it, please share it. So thanks again for joining in. And until next time, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.